guys welcome back to my channel today we are going to learn how to make the mariposa crochet top or another version of a butterfly crochet top so this top is made of two segments um, on each side so we have the upper wing and then the lower wing uh, it may not look like a wing right now but when worn we have something really beautiful i'll be attaching some of my pattern testers and for those who don't know this is a design from last year and we had some people testing this pattern and they got really amazing results so enjoy some of the gallery of this design and uh yes for those who would like the written pattern it's already available and i'll be leaving all the links in the description box below So this top is um, made of the upper wing and the lower wing, as I had said at the beginning of the video. So let's jump into the video and get started. So you're going to grab your yarn and your hook and you're going to make a slip knot. After your slip knot, you're going to make a chain of two. And you're going to go into the very first chain that you made with one single crochet, insert your hook, pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over pull through two. And then one double crochet into the same exact chain. So the very first chain is going to get a total of two stitches, one single crochet and one double crochet, and that marks the end of row one. So let's go on to row two. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and you are going to go into the very first stitch, which should be a double crochet. And you're going to go into it with one single crochet, one double crochet, and one single crochet, all in the very first stitch. And then into the single crochet stitch, you're going to make one double crochet, one single crochet and one double crochet. So uh, you should notice that each of the first, um, each of the stitches from the first row has gotten three stitches and row two should bring us to a total of six stitches. So let's go on to row three. Row three, you're going to chain one, turn your work. You're going to place a single crochet in each double crochet and a double crochet in each single crochet. So since we ended our row with a double crochet, you're going to turn your work after chaining one. You're going to go into the very first stitch with a single crochet. Since uh, from the previous row, it's a double crochet. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next single crochet, a single crochet into the next double crochet, a double crochet into the next single crochet, a single crochet into the next double crochet and a double crochet into the very last single crochet and this should bring us to the same number of stitches as the previous row since we haven't made any increases or decreases so we should be having a total of six stitches for row three let's go on to row four row four is going to be an increase row and just like row two we shall increase in the very first stitch and the very last stitch now um, you're going to chain one, turn your work. Now into the very first stitch, you're going to place one single crochet, one double crochet, and one more single crochet, all in the first stitch. And then you're going to go into the next stitch and place a double crochet into that single crochet one single crochet into the double crochet, one double crochet into the single crochet, one single crochet into the double crochet, and you should be left with a single crochet stitch. So we're going to go into it with one double crochet, one single crochet, and one more double crochet. And that means we have increased both at the beginning of our row and at the end of the row. That marks the end of row four and row five you're going to chain one and turn your work row five is a non-increase round so you're going to go into each double crochet with a single crochet 
and each single crochet with a double crochet all the way across, alternating between single crochet and double crochet. So you sh should notice by now that each row starts with a single crochet and ends with a double crochet, unless stated otherwise. So somewhere ahead, we shall change that. But uh, for now, this is what we have. Each row starts with a single crochet and ends with a double crochet. So that marks the end of row five. Row six is basically going to be the same as row four. You're going to chain one, turn your work, place one single crochet, one double crochet, and one single crochet all in the first single crochet stitch. All in the first double crochet stitch, sorry. So one single crochet, one double crochet, one single crochet, all in the first stitch. And then one double crochet into the next single crochet. For the middle part, you just keep alternating between single crochet and double crochet, making sure you place a single crochet into each double crochet and a double crochet into each single crochet until you get to the second last stitch. So when you get to the second last stitch, you should have placed a single crochet into the double crochet. Now for the very last one, which is this one, which should be a single crochet stitch, you're going to place one double crochet, one single crochet, and one double crochet all in the same stitch. That way you have increased at the end of the row and at the beginning of the row as well. So we're going to keep alternating between the increase and non-increase rows. And you should notice at this point that the even rows are the increase rows and the odd rows are the plain rows of no increases. So just keep alternating between the two until, uh, let me just check on the written pattern for you guys, until you have a total of, um, let me see here. Until you have a total of 12 rows for size extra small, 14 rows for size small, 16 for size medium, size large will be 18 rows, extra large will be 20 rows, and XXL will be a total of 22 rows. So just keep um, going. As long as you're following the same exact gauge, um, you should be fine. So just keep alternating between the two rows and I'll meet you back when I have my desired number of rows. So guys, here we are with our triangular shape. And um, if I place my measuring tape across the base of the triangle, I am getting about 7.5 inches. And when I slightly stretch it, I am getting my eight inches. So um, you're going to continue alternating between rows three and four until um, the upper part of your panel, which is this one. The base of the triangle measures measurement B when slightly stretched. And you should make sure you're ending with an increase row. So the increase row is the one where we increase at the beginning and at the end. So that means we are going to end up or working a total of um, an even number of rows because our even rows are the ones that uh, get an increase both at the beginning and at the end of the row. So let's go on to the next part. The pattern says for the next three rows, you're going to repeat row three. And remember row three is the non-increase row. So you're going to just chain one, turn your work, place a single crochet in each double crochet. Make sure you're already starting with a single crochet. So single crochet into the double crochet and double crochet into the next single crochet and repeat this all the way across. So we're coming to the end of our very first row of no increase. 
So I told you we need a total of three rows of no increase. So this is the very first one and I'm placing my last double crochet into the last single crochet of the previous row. And you can see that the triangular shape has started getting flat edges. So you're going to repeat this two more times, repeating row three, which is the non-increase row. So chain one turn and then place a single crochet in each double crochet and a double crochet in each single crochet. So repeat this until you get your three rows of non-increase and I'll meet you guys back to show you what to do next. Alright guys, after your three rows of no increases, you should have something that looks like this. The shape of the triangle should have changed into something like this on the edges. It's something flat around this part. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to start creating decrease rows. And uh, for this we are going to decrease both at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row, just like we did for the increase rows, we were increasing both at the beginning and at the end for the increase rows of the uh, first part of the top. So now the second part of the top, we are going to be decreasing to get to a pointed tip, just like we started here. So let me show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to chain one, turn my work. This is a decrease row. So chain one, turn your work, skip the first two stitches. So you're going to skip the double crochet, skip the single crochet, and into the next double crochet, you're going to place a single crochet there. So one single crochet into the third stitch, which should be a double crochet. So one single crochet into it, and you're going to continue to place one double crochet in each single crochet, and one single crochet in each double crochet all the way across until you have a total of three stitches left on your row. So I have three stitches left. As you can see, we have this one, this one, and this one. So um, at this point, you should be on a single crochet and then the three last stitches. So you're going to skip over the next two stitches and then into the very last stitch, you're going to place a double crochet. So you should notice that even now, we are starting with a single crochet and ending with a double crochet. So let's go on to the next row, which should be row 20, row 21, sorry, row 21. So you're going to chain one, turn your work. This should be a non-increase row. So uh, a non-decrease row, sorry, a plain row of just normal stitches. So this should resemble row three. So you're going to go into the first stitch with a single crochet and then a double crochet into the next single crochet. So we're coming to the end of row 21, which is a non-decrease row. And I'm placing a double crochet into the very last single crochet of the previous row. So this is what you should have. Now we're going to keep alternating between the decrease row and the non-decrease row, which is the plain row. Just keep alternating until you have two stitches left on your row. And I'll be back to show you what to do. Now for the next row, you're going to just chain one, turn your work. And just for the, just as we did for the decrease row, uh, we're going to skip the first two stitches and into the next, uh, stitch, which should be a double crochet, we are placing a single crochet there. And then continuing with our pattern, placing a double crochet into each single crochet and vice versa until we come to the end of the row when we have a total of three stitches left and we shall do our next decrease. So I'm demonstrating this one more time so that uh, we don't get any confusion when it comes to what to do. So this is our decrease row. 
So we're coming to the end of the row and we have three stitches left and you should skip them, skip two stitches and then go into the very last one with one double crochet. So another thing that you'll notice is on the decrease rows, we shall be creating these little holes on the side edge of our top on one side. We don't create those holes here. The holes are not created there, but they are automatically created on this end. So if you see this happening, just leave it. We are going to use these holes to, um, to lace up our top at the end. So they are essential. If you see this, don't try to block it. It's like part of the design, but it's created automatically within the design as we work. So we are on our non decrease row. You chain one. And then turn your work and place a single crochet in each double crochet and a double crochet into each single crochet. So just go all the way across. So I'm going to keep alternating between those two rows until I have a total of two stitches left on my row. And you should notice that your work has started coming in. As you can see here, that means we are creating decreases and at some point we are going to run out of stitches. So that's why I'm telling you, keep working until you have a total of two stitches on your row. So just go ahead and do that. I'll meet you back somewhere around this point. So here is a little update of how everything should be looking like. In case you're wondering how your work should be progressing, this is what it should be looking like. These holes should be evenly placed as you work your decrease rows and alternate between the decrease and the non-decrease rows. Okay guys, now I have a total of six stitches and I want to show you the next row where we shall end up with only two stitches. So you're going to chain one and turn, and this is our decrease row. So you're going to skip over two stitches, and into the third, you're going to place a single crochet. So go into the third stitch with a single crochet, and this should leave us with a total of three stitches. And since this is a decrease row, you're going to skip over two stitches and directly go into the very last stitch with a double crochet. All right, guys, after your double crochet, that will mark the end of your um, panel. And you're going to just chain one. So let's see what we have. We have a diamond-like shape. If you're to look closely, we have this. I have my laptop here because I'm trying to follow the written pattern to the T so that uh, in case you purchase the pattern, you can follow along closely and comfortably without any alterations. So uh, this is what we have for this panel. And now we're going to go on to the next step. You're going to make an identical piece, just like the first one. All right, guys, now we're going to work our lower wing and it's going to start off just like the upper wing. But uh, the lower wing has changes when it comes to the decreasing rows, we do something different. So we're going to start off with a slip knot. And once you have your slip knot, you're going to make a chain of two, one and two. The lower wing is going to be smaller than the upper wing. So after your two chains here, you're going to go into the very first chain that you made with one single crochet and one double crochet. So that makes it two stitches into the very first chain. So let's go on to row two. Row two is going to be an increased row and you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to go into the very first stitch with one single crochet one double crochet and one more single crochet all in the same stitch and then for the last stitch which is this one you're going to place one double crochet one single crochet 
and one double crochet all in the same stitch. So this should bring us to six stitches for row two. Then we're going on to row three. We're still going to make an increased row. So uh, once you know how to make the upper panel, don't think that you know the whole piece and go ahead and make these things because the changes are real and they have to be made. So row three is going to be an increased row and you're going to chain one, turn your work. Into the first stitch, you're going to place three stitches, one single crochet, one double crochet, and one more single crochet. And then into the next stitch, you're going to place one double crochet into the single crochet, one single crochet into the double crochet, one double crochet into the single crochet, one single crochet into the double crochet. And now we have one more stitch left, and this is a single crochet. That means it will get three stitches, one double crochet, one single crochet, and one more double crochet all in the same stitch. So that way we have made another row of increase and you should be having a total of 10 stitches at this point. You can cross check. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So cross check your work to make sure there are no errors. So row four is going to be a non-increase row. So you're going to just chain one, turn your work, and work one single crochet in each double crochet and one double crochet in each single crochet all the way across, alternating between the two stitches. And making sure that you started with a single crochet and end your row with a double crochet. All right, we are done with row four. Now we're going to continue alternating um, between two rows of increase and one row of non-increase. So two rows that resemble row three and one row that resembles row four. So two increase rows, one non-increase row. So uh, we're going to keep doing that until we have a total of seven rows for extra small, seven rows for small, seven rows for medium, 10 rows for large, 10 rows for uh, extra large, and uh, 13 rows for XXL. So two rows of increase, one row of no increase until you have uh, your desired number of rows or the rows that I've mentioned. So this is an increase row and this is row five. And I want to increase until I have a total of seven rows. Since this pattern, um, I chose to make for a size extra small. And in the pattern, it says you're going to make a total of seven rows for the size extra small. So we are done with row five. Let's go on to row six. It should also be an increase row because we do two rows of increase and then one row of no increase. So this is my increase row and this is row six. So after my last increase on row six, I'm going to chain one and turn my work. Row seven is going to be the row that doesn't have increases. So uh, regardless of what size you're making, the very last row should be a row of no increase. So I'm making my row of no increase and this is row seven. So that means row seven, row 10 and row 13 will be non increase rows. All right, now we are done with our row seven. 
And now for the next row, which should be row eight, row eight for extra small, small, medium, row 11 for large and extra large. And then 2XL, this will be row 14. Uh, you're going to make one more row of no increase. So chain one, one single crochet in each double crochet and one double crochet in each single crochet. So one more row of no increase after getting the number of rows that you desire for your size or getting the number of rows that are measured in the pattern. So after that one row of no increase, now we're going to start creating decrease rows. And this time they're going to be different from the decrease rows of the upper panel. So you're going to chain one, turn your work. This should be row nine, nine, nine. I'm mentioning for the different sizes, nine, 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 12, 12, and 15. So you're going to chain one and turn your work, skip the first two stitches. And then one single crochet into the next double crochet and then continue to alternate between double crochet and single crochet all the way across placing a single crochet into each double crochet and a double crochet into each single crochet until you have three stitches left all right now that we have three stitches left here, we have one, two, and three. We're going to skip one stitch. We're going to skip this single crochet and make a double crochet decrease into the last two stitches. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the second last stitch, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook and don't pull it up. Just keep it there, yarn over, pull through two. And then yarn over, go into the last stitch, insert your hook, pull up a loop. You will have four loops on your hook, yarn over pull through two. You will have three loops left on your hook and yarn over pull through all. So that way we've created a double crochet decrease, but we haven't created the other big holes that we had for our upper panel. So chain one, turn your work. And then you're going to create two rows of no increases. So one single crochet in each double crochet and one double crochet in each single crochet all the way across. So two rows of no increases and then one row, sorry, two rows of no decreases because we are on the decrease side. Then one row of decrease. So this is the first row of no decrease. And since we need two, we're going to do the same for the next row, chain one turn. And then make another non decrease row. So now that we have two rows of no decrease, now we're going to make one row of decrease. So chain one, turn your work, skip the first two stitches, and then single crochet into the next double crochet. And you should notice that the rows are still starting with a single crochet and then ending with a double crochet. But now the fact that we are on the decrease row, we shall end with a double crochet decrease. So continue to alternate between the stitches until you have three stitches left and then make one double crochet decrease into the last two stitches. And I hope you still remember how to do that. If you don't go back to the very first decrease row and repeat the same exact process. So two rows of no decrease, 
I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So we are done with our two rows of no decrease and now we are going to create one row of decrease. Hope you still remember how to do that. Chain one turn, skip the first two stitches, one single crochet into the next double crochet and then alternate between double crochet and single crochet until you have three stitches left. So we are here skip the next stitch and double crochet decrease into the last two stitches like that then two rows of no decrease So we are done, one row of decrease. So chain one turn, skip two stitches, one single crochet into the next double crochet. And then we are skipping the next stitch and placing a double crochet decrease into the last two stitches. Okay, and you're going to continue this until you have two stitches left. Now we have the single crochet at the beginning and the double crochet decrease stitch. So those are two stitches and you're going to chain one, turn your work and you're going to place one single crochet into the first stitch and then one double crochet into the last stitch. And this should be an, a non decrease row. The very last row should have two stitches, but with no decrease. So that marks the end of um, our lower panel. So you're going to go ahead and make an identical piece to this one. Let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you what mine will look like. All right guys, so at this point you should be having two upper panels finished. Uh, I went ahead to just attach a total of 100 chains on this corner up here and the corner up here. Just place your work like this so that the loops or the spaces that we created on one side of the upper panel uh, those two sides face each other like this. And then you're going to attach uh, a strand of a hundred on this side, a strand of a hundred on this corner as well. And the same applies to this side, one on the upper side, and then one on the lower side, just like we did for the diamond top. Now uh, you're going to make another chain of a hundred, which I have here, and you're going to put it aside. And then we have our two lower panels. They should be identical. So um, the one with the protruding extension, you can see this. This side that's longer is the side that's going to go down here. You're going to place your work like this so that this shorter side is going to attach onto the upper panel. And then you're going to get this piece as well. And place it like this, just like we've done on this side. So I hope everything makes sense right now. Now, um, after my lower panel, I didn't finish up my panel well. So I'll just chain one and pull through this strand like that. And then I'll just do the same on this side. Just chain one and pull through. So at this point, you have all the pieces needed for the for the top and now you're going to grab your darning needle here is mine uh, i have my darning needle here and you're going to get a short strand of yarn this is even more than enough and we're going to start attaching our lower panels onto the upper panels 
So you're going to start from, we're going to start with this side. So just like we had placed the lower wing to the upper one, you're going to start from here. And then start attaching randomly. Just make sure you don't distort the general shape of the wings or the panels. You can go row to row or just eyeball and find the best place to put a stitch. As long as you don't distort the general shape of the piece. So you're going to attach until you get to this corner. You can see the lower wing or the lower panel has a corner at this point. So you just attach that side alone. And the moment you're done with that, you're going to turn your work onto the wrong side and weave in this tail, just weave it in. Just go in and out of a few stitches and make sure your tail is secure enough and you're going to cut your yarn at this point. Now let's go back to the right side and see what we have. We have attached one side of the lower wing onto part of one side of the upper wing because we haven't gone all the way to this side. So at this point we have two strands here. You can just go ahead and knot them together like that and cut your yarn so that part is done you can also cut this tail at this point okay now you're going to do the same exact process for the second wing or the second lower panel and join it onto the second upper panel so let me just go ahead and do that real quick start from the inner side going outwards don't forget that and leave a tail behind so that we can just tie the two strands together when we come to this part so you can even go ahead and just tie this together i usually love to make a triple knot just to make sure that my ends are secure enough so the moment you're done with that you're going to just go across joining the two panels together So the moment you get to the corner, you're going to have something that looks like this. This is identical to what we have on this side. So when you get to the corner, you're going to just turn your work onto the wrong side and weave in this tail just like we did for the first panel. So when you're done with that, you're going to cut your yarn. And this is what you're going to have. You're going to have two pieces. Let me just do this uh, so that you can see everything clearly. You're going to have two pieces that look exactly the same. So that brings in this uh, chain of a hundred. We're going to lace it up in these loops that we created when we were working the, the upper panels or the upper wings. So, you're going to grab your crochet hook and start lacing it up. So you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight spaces. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that means we are going to start from that downer bit. Just like that. And make sure your chain is balanced on both ends. And we're going to start lacing it up in the middle section. So
So those holes are created automatically. And even if you don't have a pressure hook to put the chain through, you can just use your fingers and just push the chain through those holes, just like I'm doing here. Just make sure you're not pulling on the stitches. Okay, so you, you'll you notice that your very last hole doesn't make it all the way up. And that's okay. That is going to create a unique design for your butterfly top. And then at this point, you can just go ahead and make a knot here on the upper side like this. And uh, now we are going to create a chain of 100 on this end and this end. Alternatively, you can make a very long chain for this upper chain and exclude these ones. You can either make here, here, and here, or make a very long one so that uh, when you're lacing it up, now imagine we didn't have these ones. You'll just pass it through this hole here so that it creates an X at the back, and then it also comes to this lower wing. So that we have something that like uh, you can see on the screen right now. That's the effect that it's going to create. If you prefer to have a chain on all the corners, that's also okay. So that you can tie them individually and tie this one. And then you can also attach one here and one here and then tie them around or just leave it hanging. There are people who prefer these lower wings to just sit on the tummy without pulling them outwards. So... That's it for today's tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to tag me in your finished projects. Um, I love you guys so much. Thanks for all the love and support. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Don't forget to check out the written pattern on all my online shops. And yeah, see you soon. Bye.